Dr. Rhonda Warner just looking at photos of the flooding damage to her home. This is what the water did to our, our backyard. Brings back a lot of emotion. It's been hell. <laughs> um, sorry. I try not to cry. Mourning the things that you lost. Mourning the life that we had here. And now we have to start new and start fresh. 12 months ago, relentless rains pushed the Tulamine and Similkameen rivers over their banks. Flood water inundated several blocks near Princeton's downtown. The dark, icy water came rushing into Warner's home, destroying furniture and family heirlooms, and leaving a layer of sewage-contaminated mud all over her home and yard. Now, after 12 months battling with insurance companies and a complete renovation of her house, Warner is back home. But she says the stress of the past year has taken a major toll. So yeah, we, we've been happy to be home, but it's still, every time that river rises, you know, my doctors had to prescribe me Ativan because I have a panic attack, right? It's just, it's scary. Leader, hey, we're back at home. Across town, Leanne Schumann and her neighbors Paul and Mary are checking on their homes. Their six-unit apartment building for adults with developmental disabilities is still under repair. Over the past year, Schumann and her friends have been shuffled from one place to another as they wait for the restoration work to finish. We've been, we've been stuck together for the last year, but we've been holding on to it, haven't we? We have. We've been sticking we it sure out. Have. It, it's been a, a rough go, but... We're Princeton strong through hell or high water, yeah. for sure. You get that right. Despite their cheery outlook, support workers say the past year has been tough as the stress of being displaced for so long compounds. It's significant. Um, you see a lot of changes in behavior and whatnot. Um, mental health certainly um, is impacted there. The impacts of the floods here are still very evident. Many homes downtown are damaged beyond repair and unlivable. And half the town still doesn't have drinking water coming out of its taps. There's a major housing shortage, and the temporary housing trailers the province has brought in are still a work in progress. Princeton isn't the only interior community that's still recovering. Last November's storm brought nearly a quarter meter of rain to the mountain ranges along the Coquihalla Highway. Floodwaters gushed down the Coldwater River, bursting its banks in multiple places, including downtown Merritt. Looking at these streets now, it's hard to imagine the amount of water that flowed here just 12 months ago. Michael Getz is Merritt's newly elected mayor. This is all consequential. Sorry. I'm so sorry for that. It's all right. I don't like to talk about it much. Uh, it's, His it's, story it's, of loss from the flood goes far beyond property and possessions. It involves a fatal traffic accident when his daughter crashed while driving to escape the devastated city, a crash that killed his granddaughter. We had no home. Uh, we had lost my granddaughter. I knew my house was underwater because I'd seen it on the, the news the night before. It's a surreal feeling when you're sitting somewhere and the breaking story is your home surrounded by water. And so it was probably the lowest point of my life. I don't think I could ever get any lower than that. Get says his neighbors are struggling too. Some homes are abandoned and others are still rebuilding. The city itself is still rebuilding, including work to build flood levees to protect the community from future floods. If we have to call in the private people to help build these dikes up, and I know it's against the rules, but we'll do it. If we're, we're left with no choices but to defend ourselves, we'll defend ourselves, no problem. It's a sentiment shared by many here, informed from the trauma over the past year to not again be caught unprepared. Brady Strachan, CBC News, Princeton.